Over the years, our group have used a number of different names. We've also done our very best to produce an annual newsreel. It seems that a film group of some sort were around in the early 1930s, but it wasn't until the late 1950s that Burnley Cine Club was first introduced. Then when videotape became available on the domestic market in the 1980s and the camcorder was the modern way of collecting movie footage, we changed our name to Burnley Cine and Video Society. The change from film to video for some of our members was very difficult to take. It'll never be as clear as film was the comment that many made. I think we can all agree that to view pictures in high definition, that argument is no longer relevant. Although for many people, cine film will always have that certain magic. The 21st century saw our name change to the Burnley Camcorder Group, and it was a couple of years later when we changed again to Burnley Filmmakers. Apparently, the word film, and I quote from the English dictionary, is a sequence of images projected on a screen creating the illusion of movement. So I think we're covered there. Now, Burnley Filmmakers have pleasure in presenting to you our Newsreel 2010. This year, introduced by our Secretary, Mr Keith Widdop, and Chairman, Mr Ken Davey. Thank you, Carl. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this year's Newsreel. Presented by Ken Davy and Keith Widdop. Hello. Well, that's another 12 months gone by. It doesn't seem five minutes since last year's show. Yes. It's now time to see what's been happening in our area over the last 12 months. As we all know, the election produced a special moment in Burnley's history. Our cameras were there as the count unfolded at the Spirit of Sports Centre. We were there as a suspected arson attack caused the destruction of property on Accrington Road. And the Race for Life event in Townley Park was also covered. Prince Charles visited our town in February. And that's where we take you first with our reporter, Mike Breeze. February the 5th was the second visit to Burnley by Prince Charles. He visited a number of organisations including Turf Moor, home of Burnley Football Club. There he met chairman of the club Barry Kilby and was presented with a special Burnley shirt with his initials on. <laughs> he also met the chief executive and directors of the club before speaking to an enthusiastic crowd. Are you all trying to get in? <laughs> Then it was off to Townley Hall, where a large number of people were waiting his arrival. First stop was the Offshoots project, where Phil Dewhurst of the Groundwork Trust introduced various people involved in the management. Phil then conducted the Prince on a tour of the project where he paid great interest in the display put on by Jackie G and her family and then spoke to apprentice Vince Roberts and Glenn Roberts, Master Bodger. Next he stopped to watch and speak to students from Burnley College on the NVQ course in environmental management. A keen artist himself, the Prince broke off to speak to Edward Foster, artist-in-residence, followed shortly afterwards by Keith Wilson from the Forest of Burnley. Inside the polytunnel, the Prince was shown seeding and sowing of sunflower seeds. Back outside, he accepted a gift on condition that he did not have to carry it away. Then it was a short walk from the offshoots project to the hall itself with time to exchange words with some of the many school children there. On the garden, the offshoots garden. That's terrific, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, a lovely time with mud everywhere. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. that was great. At the hall entrance, the Prince was made welcome by the High Sheriff of Lancashire and other council officials, including Susan Bowen, the curator of Townley Hall. 
Upstairs in the art gallery, the prince met with groups from local businesses throughout the area before departing to visit other venues in the town. It's auction time here at Turf Moor, and who better to benefit from it than our very own Pendleside Hospice. With supporters young and old eagerly awaiting this fun-filled event, the star attraction being Lot 7, a fully autographed Claret team shirt. The evening was supported by Burnley Filmmakers, who projected three short films about local events. With dry throats now lubricated, it's time for our Master of Ceremonies, Mr John Ryan. We're going to have a good night tonight, aren't we? Yes! And you've all made an effort because it's not the best of nights, is it? No! Oh. I'm sure my wife, if she could find a way for divorcing me without making me happy, she would. <laughs> and then we're going to have some hot supper. What's the supper, uh, Margaret? I am peace, we'll all forward to that. What sort is it this in a big tray are the individual pies? Well can you find that? Because to be honest, last pie I had here, it were in one of them trays and I've put my towels in my bathroom over here. <laughs> Uh, we're having an auction. Have you, have we got people in with plenty of money tonight? No. Alright, oh, I'll not bother with that. <laughs> hey, I'll get Frank there. Enjoy yourself. Spent all day doing his hair and left it at home. <laughs> Now, I know we've got a wealthy audience, and this is worth, you know, a lot of money. Imagine this, if you put it away now for Christmas, you know, for a grandson or whatever. So they'd love it, one of the serious things, they'd love it. So I need somebody to start off with a decent price. I'm going to start bidding, because there's no point messing around with five as a resource, go straight in, five hundred quid. <laughs> 50! Round 50! Well done, Mr. Peter Vaughan, a keen supporter of Pendleside Hospice. Just to keep you up to date, the chappies from the Red Arrow, who landed on the roof, he's still there, he's still there, he's still there. The evening at Turf Moor was a great success and Burnley filmmakers were able to present a cheque for over £400 to the Pendleside Hospice. The Race for Life at Townley Park in May this year attracted over 17,000 ladies. Race for Life was conceived specifically for raising awareness of women's cancer. The National Events Manager for Cancer Research UK Trudy Stammer was able to add over £70,000 for the Breast Cancer Fund from the Ladies of Burnley this year. Seven million women have taken part, raising over three million. After a bit of a false start, they finally got away. The weather in the end was kind as earlier it had threatened to rain. Cancer Research UK's Bobby Moore Fund also organises a similar event exclusively for men, Run For More. The proceeds for this event only go towards bowel cancer research and campaigns. The Race for Life at Townley was won this year by Katie Trickett. But of course, there are no losers in this wonderful effort to fight against cancer. 45 seconds, 90 minutes, 45 seconds of us. Well done, great time, 90 minutes, 45. It's... On the 6th of May this year, the Spirit of Sports Centre on Omorod Road was the venue where history was recorded for Burnley. 
The general election produced a total of almost 42,000 votes as Liberal Democrat candidate Gordon Birtwistle became our new Member of Parliament. It had become quite obvious as the count came nearer to completion that the Lib Dems had cracked it as Mr Birtwistle and his team couldn't hold back their delight. I hereby declare that Gordon Birtwistle is duly elected. His greatest supporter, Mrs Kathleen Birtwistle, looks proudly on as her husband gives his acceptance speech and thanks everyone for their support. I will not let them down. Thank you. Whilst Burnley Town Centre was busy celebrating the CVS 75th anniversary, across town at Turf Moor, the registration for the second hospice midnight walk was taking place. More than 2,000 ladies took part in the event. The eight mile walk started at Burnley Football Club. Before setting off, Gemma Barron and her fellow presenters from 2BR Radio entertained the crowd. Martin, it's been a case of you are wearing your kilt later on for these ladies. i got to kill how many ladies so far want to see me in a skirt? And after a minute's silence in memory of lost friends, a huge sea of pink flooded the streets of Burnley and Pendle as they made their way along the route. Three, two, one, Passing motorists encouraged the ladies as they went by sounding their horns and there was also lots of encouragement from residents as they sat on their walls. More than 200 volunteers worked through the night, marshalling the route and helping at the football club. The event was sponsored by Charter Walk Shopping Centre, which means that the almost £275,000 raised goes straight to patient care. Since the official opening of Townley Park in 1902, millions of people have enjoyed its facilities. Thank you for inviting Madam Mayoress and I to officially open two exhibitions and to start the weekend celebrations on the completion of the Heritage Lottery Fund Parkland Restoration Works. I think the council team have done a fantastic job here and have spent our money very, very wisely indeed. Um, now, you know, heritage is about people. Um, it's not a dry and dusty thing. The, the, the two million project uh, money that, this, um, that we, we made available here came under the Parks for People project and people is the important factor. People using the park, people loving the park, people making the park come alive is so important. Unfortunately, the mid-June heritage celebration fell foul of the weather and the opening parade was immediately followed by a downpour so the Britannia coconut dancers had to move into the tea marquee for their display. The day ended with our cameraman John getting into training to join the Britannia Coconutters. July 2010, which is exactly 80 years since Thompson Park was opened from uh, July 1930. Lovely placid park that we all know. Ideal for spending a Sunday afternoon leisurely uh, rowing round the boating lake. Mr. 
Rob Cole demonstrating Margarita. This beautiful organ, which has raised six thousand five hundred pounds for charity. That was something of a surprise, but um, the park is still nice and pleasant. This is Hapton Brownie's Tombola stall. <laughs> These are two of the Hapton Brownie's leaders. Yeah, and the animals, birds. Ah, here they come, all the customers to enjoy the fun of the fair. Sliding bouncy cat, round about. And even a how how meal if you're hungry. Let's have a ride on the uh, Union Pacific Railway. Give us away. More bounty cattle. And the first aid post is man. This is Janet. And she's um, running the stall for the Mayor's Charity. Calmness. Serenity. Beautiful flowers. July, the time for roses. And, ah, oh, what have we here? The wise old owl. Three wise old owls from the committee. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Uh, perhaps a snack. Or rescue a ferret. So many things to do. And this <laughs> yes, 80 years of Thompson's Park. July 27th and it's Connecting Communities Day in Paddyham. Letting people know what's going on within their communities. Well, it's absolutely wonderful that something like this comes to Padium and not in the greater place in this area. We've got all the various stores, all the community stores, people to come, ask the questions, where do I go, pay for advice, what do I do about this and what do I do about that? And that is fantastic to give out general advice to put people in the right direction of where they need to go for help. The Home Start organisation gives help to families with children under five and does courses in positive parenting. Today they were in for a surprise from Graham Lager of BBC Radio Lancashire. Home Start supports families in the Burnley and Paddyham community. It's quite a bespoke um, kind of support because we do group support, one-to-one -one support through volunteers. Susan's been a volunteer with Home Start now for five years um, and fortunately Home Start give um, volunteers training opportunities, opportunities for employment but most um, and most importantly they give some something back to the families and it's really quite rewarding isn't it Susan? Yeah it is. Yeah. I imagine funding, especially now, very tight. Funding is really extremely tight. We are, well recently we have applied uh, for some funding for children in need which we'll find out about in about two weeks um, and that will be to open a group in the Rosal area of Burnley in order to provide uh, educational facilities and drop-in facilities for children and families. Open up this. All right, thank you. Open up this and read it to me. Read it to me. Oh my God! <laughs> Homestar, I've just been awarded £24,540! Yay! Oh my gosh! Margaret is the chair of our committee, so how good is that, Margaret? Because we is, have been really struggling, great. haven't it, we? It really is. Yes, we are struggling and we, pres we presume that the next year will be harder still, really, as you say, with, with the drawbacks, cutbacks. Uh, this will go a long way, yes. It's just great that for the, the actual children of Burnley, it is, yes. So well, really congratulations. congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
During the summer we invited the Mayor of Paddyham to tell us something about the new Riverside Walk. So that's one of our proud things that we've done in Paddyham. Four years ago we applied to the People's Millions and you go through various stages of uh, going through different parts of the competition and we got to the, uh, the final and it was between ourselves and Warrington City Council and we actually won the vote and from that we won the £50,000. It was all done, uh, the phones were put in, the dog bins were put in, the rubbish bins were put in and people can walk for a good half a mile or so on the riverside. There's access for disabled people which we didn't have which is absolutely fantastic. And this is how the people of Paddyham and the Paddyham Town Council spent the £50,000. That was what we applied for and we won it. And, it and as you walk along the river, you'll see all the new uh, bench we've put in. But we've planted, um, I think it's about 10,000 bulbs. You can walk a good half a mile right the way down to Bentwood Bridge. And it's a fantastic little walk for people. And also you see the people fishing on the river. So hopefully they might be catching some salmon on the, on the river colder. The evening of August the 4th this year, a row of nine terraced houses were burnt to the ground on Accrington Road. The flames leapt 40 foot high at the height of the fire. Neighbours were evacuated from their homes as eight fire crews tackled the blaze. The 75-year-old man had to be rescued from his house by firefighters. It started about five o'clock in the evening and it wasn't until 8.30 that the fire crews were able to bring it under control. Residents were not allowed back into their homes until the following day. There's a gas leak as well, so we're asking people to stay as far back down here as possible. Uh, yeah. This young lady was able to give the fire chief some valuable information as she was playing nearby when it started. Oh, yeah, at the beginning of the balcony, yeah. <laughs> well, the three came out. When the fire, when you first saw the fire, you were, you were over here on the balcony, where was the fire burning? In front of the window. This, if you're, this is a whole building here. Where did it, start? it is believed the fire was arson and perhaps started by children. It was coming out of the window because the window was smashed, they smashed the window. So was it the bottom, middle or top? The top. Top floor? Where the smoke was coming. August the 10th was the occasion of the Mayor of Burnley's civic tour. Councillor Anthony Lambert had invited the leaders of the other local authorities in Lancashire to see some of the delights of Burnley. The dignitaries met up at the Stables Cafe for bacon and egg sandwiches and of course the team photograph. A short walk took the guests to Townley Hall for a guided tour. In the Great Hall, they were welcomed by guides dressed in appropriate costume before departing to look round this gem of Burnley's heritage. In the North Wing, the visitors were shown the art galleries with a display of important Victorian paintings, watercolours and other collections. The Honorary Pearly King and Queen of Lancashire were on hand to show the new display of costumes handcrafted and on exhibition for the first time. 
Downstairs, a visit was made to the chapel that dates from the early part of the 16th century. Nearby are the servants' hall and the old kitchen. The guests, who welcomed the opportunity to sit down for a bit, were entertained here by the guides with stories about various items and events. The kitchen was last used in 1901 and is largely unaltered from that time. Luncheon was served in the Regency Rooms in the South Wing. Today, one of these is used for temporary exhibitions, whilst the other is for concerts and special events. The cantilevered staircase enabled the visitors to get to the roof void above the Great Hall. There, they were able to see the workings of the clock, as well as hunting trophies and the construction of the roof itself. Finally, the guests were shown the long gallery. Four bedrooms are used nowadays to display the museum's large collection of 17th century furniture. The mayor's guests then boarded a coach which took them to Turf Moor, the home of Burnley Football Club. Paul Fletcher, the chief executive, made everyone welcome, after which a tour was made of the main rooms below the Bob Lord stand, including the display room with its trophies dating back to the early days of the Football League. A brief respite in the director's box allowed the guests a view of work taking place on the pitch, after which they visited the players' changing rooms and then made a stop for tea. The Civic Tour came to an end in Thompson Park and a ride on the miniature rail. Our reporter Dave Berry visited this year's community festival on what turned out to be a very sunny August day. The usual contributors were getting their presentation set up from early on. And it looks like you will even be able to get your bike checked out. The entertainment people were tuning up on the main stage and it was certainly warm enough to eat out, even if the day isn't going just according to plan. This man is uh, carving snakes out of a tree trunk. It's, it's started off as a hobby but it's fast becoming, uh, it's producing money now. I get commissions now through what I've done at Townley and, uh, and this part, so it is starting to change, yeah. The day soon got going with a constant flow of visitors. Quite a number of stalls are around the park and in marquees. This girl is making chrysanthemums out of wood. talking about on the radio um, is over there and they have got raffle tickets for you to buy as well. The day was a success and the lovely weather certainly helped everyone have a great time.
August 28th dawn dull and damp, but it didn't dampen the spirits of the villages of Hyam as they prepared for their third annual Scarecrow Festival. Our cameraman seemed to be suffering from the night before, as did one of the locals. This year the event was opened by local TV and radio personality Tony Lifsey. He's going to, uh, to open our Scarecrow Festival, so I hand it over to Tony. Uh, thank you very much, Terry. Um, well, it, it does give me great pleasure to be here. I'm a local lad. Um, having been born and brought up in Nelson, it's the first time ever I've been invited to what we used to call the Hollywood of Pendle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pleased to be able to be here to open up. So, uh, I don't suppose there's a ribbon in it. No, there is. <laughs> uh, I'll declare the festival yeah. open then. Thank you. Thank you. It was then time to set off around the village with the difficult task of picking a winner from the 76 entries. Through the proceedings, yes. We've another four miles to go. Yes. <laughs> what, uh, really First thought? of all, I want reimbursing for all my shoe leather. <laughs> I think it's very good. Yeah, very impressive. Mary Poppins actually flies over the road, so I, no, I'm surprised at the standard. To be perfectly fair, I think it's. Uh... Uh, thank you very much, everybody. I'd just like to announce that the expedition to see all the scarecrows has arrived home safely. We set off two weeks ago. I was, I've been surprised at what I found as I've walked around the village. I wasn't sure what to expect when I first came here, but the amount of time and effort and humour that's got into all the scarecrows is wonderful. And, it, and it's symptomatic to me of a, a really lively community. So I think collectively you should all be very proud of, of what you've got going here. And I'm sure it'll just get bigger and bigger as the years go by. And the winner uh, for me, because it just shows imagination and someone's put a lot of time into it uh, and a sense of humor, etc., etc., was Mary Poppins again, but it's the one that actually flies. So kids, if you've not seen that, there's a Mary Poppins in the village that, that actually flies. So you should go and do that. So that. Uh, this year, Terry is my winner. Thank you very much for the invite, I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. I'm Stephen Hughes, I'm the support services manager for the Alzheimer's Society East Lancashire. We're based in Burnley here. But uh, we provide support across East Lancashire. Today is our second annual memory walk, and it's uh, just a two mile gentle walk around the grounds of Townley Park here. Uh, it's, a, it's an event to raise funds, but it's uh, importantly as well, it's a memory walk for people to remember people who they've lost to dementia uh, of all kinds. Everybody that did the walk gets a certificate. So today's been a, a lovely day. It was raining earlier on, but it, it's a nice sunny day now. Everybody's done the walk. Everybody's getting certificates. And uh, we've really enjoyed it. Can I just thank every single one of you for coming today? Thank you very, very much. It's been a fantastic success. Again, it's the second walk. We'll be here again next year for the third. So I hope you've enjoyed it. And once again, thank you so much. Nelson's most up-to-date theatre was packed to the rafters on the 6th of October this year as Pendle movie makers opened the doors to the public in the new Ace Centre.
Members were delighted to see so many had come along. This included the Mayor of Pendle to celebrate the club's 50th anniversary. After we were treated to a wonderful display of filming and editing skills in the form of some superb movies dating back to the 60s, we managed to catch up with club chairman John Morgan. But first, we spoke to retired veterinary surgeon and filmmaker and long-standing member Peter Copestake. I've been filming since 1978. I joined the club very soon after I started and never intended to get involved but somehow seemed to have done I do the film to video transfer for the club. From what I've seen, it seems like it's been a successful afternoon for us. Um, we, we're not sure whether it's quite full. I think it's almost full, so we've got somewhere in the region of 200 people here, which we seem quite happy with. How I started on filming was because people kept asking me how to... to get, Sorry, people kept asking me to give talks to them about my work. And I said, I can't talk. You can tell now I, I, I can't talk. And I said, but I can make films. Well, I think I can and could make films. And I started making vet films, but they're a bit gory, of course. And although the club has seen them, you've got to be careful who sees them. But they are in themselves archived because veterinary science veterinary surgery has moved on so much since then. We're also delighted to get a word with the IAC's Northwest Chairman, who also attended. It's lovely to see the community coming together to watch the past. I've always said that that was one of the roles of cine clubs, was to get out there in the community and film things, because that, this, is what, this is when they have the value, years later, many years later. I'm really enjoying it because I rarely get such a great chance to see material um, we've got some of that material in the archive, but not all of it. So I'll be wanting to talk to people later about, um, especially some of the earlier films, which are, which are great examples. The day was a great success in every way, and any proceeds gained by the club went to Pendle Hospice. The Rachel K. Shuttleworth Building on Yorkshire Street has been the home of the Council for Volunteer Service, or the CVS, for the last 10 years. And in this year of the organisation's 75th anniversary, an open day was arranged with presentations, displays and entertainment, plus an opportunity to meet different charities. This 10th anniversary celebration was held on the 8th of October this year. American. Chairman Phil Clay welcomed everyone and set the format for the day. With many dignitaries present, the event was well represented. Thank you for your very kind invitation to the council. I'm going to cut my speech down by 20 minutes. I've said it all, so I've got a slightly different tack. The way I look at it is why we need this resource centre. I can speak of it. We had a, a carer's contact event a few months ago in the Mechanics Hall. And they were recognised. The At this point, various people were recognised for their hard work. The event went well with presentations from a number of different organisations. Um, there was also an opportunity to have a look around a room dedicated to showing varied and different types of work the volunteers do. A very substantial lunch was well received, after which we managed to get a word with some of those present. Um, it did take a lot of organising, but that's um, thanks to you there to Carol, the centre manager and her team. Um, and some of the development officers uh, and I think it so far has gone very well uh, We've come this morning and, and as usual with the CVS uh, and, uh, uh, and Mr Clay in particular that we get uh, quite a lot of, uh, uh, of invites and there's always this wonderful atmosphere where everybody is quite willing to talk to us It's been very special, yes I have uh, in fact it's been a pleasure to be here today and listen to what's been done and said over the years. In fact, it's a good reminder to me, because I've been coming here nearly 10 years, so it's been a reminder to me of what's gone on. Marvellous, this is what you find out when you are the Mayor, 
visiting so many places, meeting so many people and finding things that you didn't really know existed. And, and in consequence, then you meet a lot of people you would never meet. And my job is to record uh, and research the 75-year history of the CVS and its forerunner bodies. And it's really been a fascinating three months already. And every corner I turn, I find out something I didn't know before. And I knew a little bit about the place before I came in. The success of the day was evident in all those that came along. Thank you very much, all. Burnley Filmmakers will be releasing a full version of the meeting on DVD in the near future. Well, that's all for this year's newsreel. We do hope you've enjoyed the show. Remember, if there are any events that you would like us to record, please get in touch. You can get in touch by ringing our coordinator, Margaret Ingle, on 01282 830 897. Or you can look for information on our website, www.burnleyfilmmakers.co.uk. So, sit back and enjoy the show, and good night. Good night.